In the next five minutes, I'm gonna to explain to you firstly what a Shiny app is, and secondly, how to make one. I'm gonna walk you through the code. We're gonna do a simple example. You are gonna love it. Let's do this, boom shakalaka. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. First, let's look at a static histogram that we might create in RStudio. And spoiler alert, obviously with the Shiny app, we're gonna make this dynamic. We're gonna make it so that the audience, the person that you're putting the graphic in front of can change some of the parameters using sliders and drop downs, et cetera, et cetera. And the graphic will automatically re-render given this sort of new set of parameters. So, but starting point, uh, we've got a histogram, reasonably boring. Here's the, the code. Obviously this comes from the faithful data set. Faithful, this is a, the, I think there's an old faithful, it's a geezer somewhere in America and it erupts every certain amount of time. And there's a waiting time between each of these eruptions. And so what we've got here is on the x-axis we've got the, the waiting time and we've got, it's a histogram so we've got the frequency or how often that waiting time is the case a simple little histogram and we can change the bins of the histogram so i mean this all, is all pretty obvious but i'll just do it to illustrate what we're trying to do there and wouldn't it be nice if the person looking at the histogram could change those bins themselves without going into the code of course it would that's what we want we want our data visualizations to be interactive uh, we want them to render in response to what it is that give the people what they want right so this is where shiny apps come in let's look at how to do that so on the screen at the moment we've got the most simple version of a shiny app uh, what you're seeing is what we call the user interface or the ui and the ui has got two components to it it's got an input and an output right so the input is what we can tweak and we can move the slider along and the histogram re-renders with a new number of bins. So super duper easy, uncomplicated, but just remember, there's a few things I want you to remember because it's important for the code. Firstly, we call this the user interface. Secondly, we've got an input and an output key because that, that all becomes important as we build our Shiny app in the code. The other thing I want you to just quickly be aware of is outside of the user interface, so a person interacts with the user interface and they might move the slider along, that information goes somewhere and then the graphic is re-rendered and then that graphic comes back. And by the way, it doesn't have to be a histogram or a plot, it could be a table, it could be text, it could be all sorts of things. But the point is, there's this back and forth. In the user, in the, in the user interface, the, the user, the person doing this, does something, information gets sent to what we call the server, and that, that's basically R. The server does something and sends something back to the user interface, which is now the output, right? So there's an input and there's an output, and in between these two, there's a server, okay? And all of that is important if you wanna understand how the, the sort of structure of the code looks. So let's jump right into that. Right, so here's the code, and before I get into the nuts and bolts of the code, there's a couple of things to point out. First of all, you've gotta call the library Shiny. Okay, so Shiny is a package. Library Shiny, that puts you in the game. Happy days, now you're good to go. Now, I mentioned a few things earlier and I'm just gonna reiterate. We've got something called a user interface. So we're gonna create an object called UI, which is user interface. And you're gonna see how that's important in a second. I also talked about the fact that there's a server, right? Which does something with what comes from the user interface and sticks, uh, and sticks an output back on the user interface. So we're gonna create another object called server. And when we pull it all together, we run this function, Shiny app, UI for user interface equals the UI, the object that we created, and server equals server. You run that and your and everything works. Happy days, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So now you see the overall structure. Let's look at each of these components one at a time, and you'll see this isn't difficult to do, and it's actually a, a really lot of fun. And when you see it do what you think it's supposed to do, it's quite satisfying. So let's jump right in. Okay, as you make your very first Shiny app, uh, everything is new, right? So you're gonna be learning new functions, new words, that's fine. My suggestion is keep it simple, right? So um, for example, for our user interface, we're starting off with this new function that's called fluid page. Basically what that means is it's gonna create a web page which dynamically changes uh, if you change it. So let me show you here, everything is dynamic, it's fluid. If I move that, everything pops around. So it's fluid page, but obviously there are other configurations you can put in there, and we're not going to get into that in this lesson. I'm wanting you to understand the underlying principles and why, it, you know, what's sitting where. So, fluid page, that's the kind of page we're setting up in this case. Then we're going to have title pa panel, right? So, on our page, we're going to have panels. The first is title panel, and we've said old uh, faithful geezer data, and you can see in the rendered uh, document, in the rendered uh, version of this, it sits there. So happy days, uncomplicated, boom shaka like let's keep going. The next thing that we define is 
uh, the configuration and we've asked for a sidebar layout, right? So this says sidebar layout. And of course there are other configurations, but in this example, we're using a sidebar layout, which means that there will be the input on the one side and the output on the other side. Obviously, because we've said it's dynamic, if you move things around, they might pop on top of each other, but um, that's the basic principle. Can you see that these are all functions within functions? There's fluid page and then open brackets. Within that, there's title panel, open and close brackets. So we finished with that. Uh, then comma, sidebar layout. So that's the next argument still within fluid page. Within sidebar layout, there's a couple of things we want to do. We've got the sidebar panel and we've got the main panel, right? So these are all arguments within sidebar layout. So there's a bit of nesting happening here. It, it's, it might seem a little bit intimidating at first, but it's, it's, really, it's really not if you look at the structure carefully. And then, so, the, so we've got the sidebar panel. So now we're talking about the sidebar panel, right? We know it's gonna be the input. And how, what kind of input do we want to use? Do we want a drop down menu? Do we want a calendar to pop up? Do we want, and in this case, we've got a slider input. So you just use the function slider input and it knows that it's gonna create one of these little slider inputs that you can drag left and right. And depending on where you've dragged it to, a different number will pop up. Right, that number that pops up needs to have a name of some description so we can reference it later on when we are telling are to render a graphic. We want that number to be part, to be inserted into the code so that it can re-render with this new parameter. And so the first argument inside slider input is, we've called it bins, you could call it anything, but that is what the data that comes from the input will be called. And it will be referenced as input dollar sign bins. In our code in a few minutes, you're gonna see us reference input dollar sign bins, and that's where it comes from easy peasy, uh, number of bins, that's just the title that is sitting above the slider input. And then for the slider, we've now defined the edges of it, the minimum, the maximum, and the default value that it sits at. So when I open this up, it usually just automatically opens up at a value of 30, and it's gonna have a slider that is between one and 50. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Nothing complicated about that. Are you with me? It's just not that complicated, it's just new. Uh, but once you've done it once or twice, uh, new becomes easy. So we've defined the sidebar panel. The next thing we wanna define is the main panel, and this is where the output is gonna sit. The output could be a plot, it could be a table, it could be any number of things. In this case, we want to tell R that it's a plot. So we're saying a plot output. That's gotta have some, the first argument is the name and we're just gonna call it dist plot, which is distribution plot, could call it anything, but we need to remember that that's what we've called it because we're gonna reference that when we start talking to the server. Does that all make sense? Okay, and then we just close our brackets, close, 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 happy days. We've now created this user interface UI object. Now we're gonna create the server object, right? So remember when we run the Shiny app, we have to have an object called server and the server is what comes from the user interface. It gets churned through the code that's required to make the graphic and then sends it back to the user interface as an output, right? So now when we create the server, really what we're doing is we're creating a function, right? And I'm, I'm assuming that you're kind of familiar with creating functions. The fact that you're looking at Shiny means you're familiar with R. If you don't know how to create a function, you can go and look at videos that I've got on that, but effectively, assigned to this word here, server, using the function function to create a function that has two arguments, input and output. Okay, you don't need to worry about that too much, but here's, here's what you just need to take note of. We open curly brackets. What's happening is we create output dist plot, uh, dollar sign dist plot. Remember we set up here when we were creating our user interface that the plot output was gonna be called a dist plot, right? So that's where that comes from. And we assign to that render plot. Now that's a new function. You, you've probably not heard of that before. It's just gonna basically say, you're gonna render the whatever plot we're gonna stick in, in the rest of this function. You're gonna render that with uh, and send that to an output called dist plot. Okay, it might be a little bit confusing, but once you've done this once or twice, you'll find it becomes easier. And everything else here is actually very straightforward because really what we've got here just is the code for a histogram. So hist, the x-axis of the histogram is faithful waiting, right? We've got that. Uh, breaks, and remember we said earlier that whatever a person puts on the slider, that's gonna be assigned to something called input dollar sign bins. Okay, we said that up here. We said the 
uh, slider input would be called bins and we would be able to fetch that with input dollar sign bins. So here we go, we've got the breaks in our histogram or input dollar sign bins. And then we say plus one, because if you say uh, you want 30 bins um, uh, and you put a 30, you actually need 31 breaks to make 30 bins, if that makes sense. So there's just a plus there just to make sure that you've got enough breaks to have enough bins in between them, if that that's how histograms work. Okay, uh, then it's just color, color, X label, main, blah, blah, nothing complicated about that. And we create this server, then we run the shiny, shiny app, UI equals UI, server equals server, we run that, and boom shakalaka, we get this shiny app. It's quite easy to do. I'm gonna suggest that you try this, uh, give it a go. Once you've done it, you can start then tweaking, playing with it, doing things a little bit differently. Um, I've tried to keep this as simple as possible. You might wanna get a bit more complicated. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, ask a question. I'll try and answer them if I can. Um, watch another video, take care, all the best, bye.